Hello, everybody. I'm going to take a moment to, to talk to you a little bit about the Book of Specifications uh, training. The AWS Book of Specifications is used for the AWS CWI exam. The current version is uh, 2017. This is not a real code. Uh, this is what's used for the Part B test that AWS administers. But I use it as a training aid for not only learning how to, <coughs> to use it for the intent of passing the uh, CWI exam, but it's also a good, it's a good book for practicing learning to read a code in general. So what we're going to do in this course is study each one of the specific clauses that's in the book of specifications and work towards understanding those better. Uh, in the book of specifications that you'll have for the training, there will be some comments that I've made that you can read in text. If you'll notice right here, you'll see the yellow highlight if you click on it, and you'll see that there's a comment. Now that's only going to work if you've actually got an Adobe Acrobat reader. If you look at it on the web or something like that, uh, it may not work. But wherever you see highlighted text, you'll see that I've made some comments. And you can actually reply to those comments if you like, and then just send me that version of the document back and I'll take a look at them. So anyway, the Part B practical involves inspecting some plastic weld replicas using the toolkits provided and using the acceptance criteria that's in this book. So with most code, you don't want to get into the uh, habit of memorizing all of the information that's in there. But there are some things that can be valuable to memorize, and that's essentially the layout and you know some of the things that are a little bit easier to bring to your mind. So notice right here it says on the bottom, do not write, the, do write in the book. Uh, when, you use, when you use your book of specifications for your test, you're not going to be able to use the ones that you have. You're not going to be able to make notes in that book of specifications while you take the test. They'll give you a book of specifications, you use it, and you do not write in it. Just make sure you understand that. But for the purpose of learning, I suggest you write in your book quite a lot. So the forward has got some great information. Tells you, you know, tells you some things about the book of specifications. Read through it, understand it, and if you've got any questions, send them to me. Okay. Again, <coughs> like I said, if you have a copy of the one that I've made comments on, then you can read those comments if you like. They may answer some of your questions, or who knows, it may confuse you even more. So one of the most important parts of any code book is the table of contents. Getting familiar with the table of contents lets you see how the book is laid out. So for instance here we've got the forward that was in the past, list of tables, list of figures. Now we've got the individual clauses that are broken down. Clause 1 is general requirements. Clause 2, workmanship requirements. Structural seal. Clause 3, pipeline. Clause 4, pressure piping. Clause 5, procedure qualification requirements. Clause 6, performance qualification requirements. And then various annexes. And we're not going to go through all those right now. We'll go through those as we go through the course a little bit better. But one of the things that you can memorize right now are what the titles of these clauses are. It's my opinion you should know these off the top of your head. General, Clause 1. Structural seal, clause two. Pipeline, clause three. Pressure piping, clause four. Procedure qualification, clause five. And performance qualification, clause six. And as you get, you, you know, as you spend more time using it, you'll, you know, that'll be second nature to you. So, next thing we've got is a list of tables. One of the things about the tables is that they're numbered sequentially all the way through the end. So they're not going to restart the numbering system where you're going to have to know that table one has something in structural, but it also is a table one in, uh, you know, clause three for pipeline stuff. So having a, having a good idea of the content of these tables is very important. And of course, location, but there, you know, there's only so many pages in the code book. In the book of specifications, I'm sorry, I called it the code book. You don't have to arrest me. Anyway, within the book of specifications, there's only so many tables, so many pages. You can flip through them pretty quick. 
the good thing that you should, or the essential thing that you should learn is what uh, are the tables about. One of the ways to learn that is as you come across a paragraph that refers to table one, go look at table one and then jump back to your paragraph. Here's a list of figures, not a whole lot of them. And then we start with the general requirements. Okay, and we're not going to go through this right now. Uh, you know, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but what I'd like for you to do as your first assignment is read this thing from cover to cover. I know that it sounds like a lot. You've got a, you know, a few days in between meetings. And as you read it, if you come across a word that you don't understand or what it's talking about, highlight it, copy it, paste it, send it to me, and we'll talk about it some. Okay, don't, don't go forward with any questions. Uh, as an example, as I read through this right here, I'm looking at the scope. Scope is a very common statement within most codes. It tells you what it applies to. Obviously, this one is not a real code. It tells you that it's for the CWI exam. But as we go forward, it explains some of the requirements for what we read, that type of stuff. Gives us some visual inspection requirements. Not particular to any specific clause, but it applies to all the clauses. Gives, you some, gives us some dimension tolerances. And boom, then it moves on to clause two. One of the things that you want to keep in mind as, you, as you're browsing through any code book is paragraph numbers. Okay, if I just look at this paragraph number here, 1.1.5, that statement, whatever that statement says right here, is in the context of the scope. Okay, I want to make sure that I'm aware of the parent paragraph, what its title is, and the scope. Okay. The tolerances, these are going to be something you don't want to memorize, but you want to understand. Okay, you want to be able to refer to them and understand what all of the, the words up here means. You know, there's oftentimes, you know, there's, I've seen some confusion on this. And we'll talk about it as we go forward in the next lesson. But this is kind of something you can look at. Again, read through the entire book of specifications. You know, it's, it's not that many words. And highlight anything or copy anything that you do not understand, you want some help with. And we take care of it one-on-one, -on -one or we can take care of it with a you know, discussion or with a forum question. But the main thing is, is don't, don't go forward not understanding something. Uh, you know, continue to read all of it, but <coughs> you know, don't forget about those things you need, you need some help with. Uh, one of the things I was talking about earlier, as I read through this, I'm in Clause 2, which is for structural. I see Paragraph 2.3, Visual Acceptance Criteria. Weld profile should be in accordance with Table 1. Well, I can go down to Table 1 pretty quickly. Just click down, there's Table 1. I may want to take a look at it, get a little bit familiar with it. Again, we're not memorizing it. But I can read some of the requirements that are in there. Another thing that's kind of nice about using the PDF document is I can copy that text. I can hit the Control F key and copy and paste that text and I can find all the occurrences of that, that phrase table 2 just to see if anything else refers to it. There's one, there it is again, and there's table 2. And that pretty much ends it. Okay. So having the search feature that's in the book of specifications can come in handy. Now when you do your practical test for AWS, you're not going to have a PDF version. So you need to be able to thumb through it and figure out where everything's at, print you out a copy and do that. But for the purposes of learning, having that ability to search for occurrences of a word can be very powerful. So we'll just look for one like undercut. We're going to look at every occurrence that's in the book of specifications. Here it is in the context of structural as an exception for intermittent filler welds under visual acceptance criteria. Here it is again in Table 1, right there. Visual acceptance criteria, structural steel. It tells me how much I can have for statically loaded non-tubular connections. And then 
here it tells me how much I can have for these other two conditions. Find another occurrence. Same word again, just talking about it in the table. Here it is in the context of clause three. Talking about grinding repairs. There's a smooth transition, it's free of undercutting and other imperfections. So it's something to think about. When I read this free of undercutting, does that mean I can't have any undercut on my weld? Or does that mean I can't have any undercut if I do a grinding repair? during the repair and removal of defects, which is underneath workmanship requirements. So here it is, undercut, in the context of paragraph 3.2.7. Paragraph 3.2 is the visual acceptance criteria. And then here we are in clause four, where it occurs again. Different acceptance criteria, but this is the context of the term. Undercut greater than 30 seconds is deep. Unacceptable. And let's look on the next one. Look, here's some more. The depth of undercut shall not exceed the lesser of 10% of the base metal thickness at 130 seconds. But what does that apply to? Paragraph 5.4, Procedure Qualification Acceptance Criteria. So here it is again. Undercut depth should not exceed the lesser of 10%. What does this apply to? The 6.412, Visual Acceptance Criteria. 6.41, Visual. 6.4, Performance Qualification Acceptance Criteria. And of course, Clause 6 is for Performance Qualification. Find another occurrence. Here it is, useful formulas, conversions, abbreviations. And there we go. So you can kind of see if you have it as a PDF document and you use the search feature, uh, you can get some things in your mind pretty easy. But the thing about jumping through a document, you've got to always remember the context that you're in. What clause you're in, what does it apply to? So anyway, as we go forward, uh, we'll have some more videos on, on more specific details, go through each clause individually, but I kind of wanted to cover the, the, the use of the Book of Specifications as a learning tool for right now. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me.